today, we're not going to talk about how to actually increase your FPS, but how to increase your internet. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Chamber here, and today we're going to be talking about internet, ethernet cards, internet tweaks, router optimizations, basically everything you can do to actually get a better internet connection. Now, this was brought up to me by people in my Discord, and they were like, you need to get this internet card. It was the i210-T1. I'll leave a link down below on Amazon. We're going to go over some interesting results with it. Now, a lot of people may not know this, but there's this stuff called buffer bloat on your internet. So what buffer bloat is, is that's when you'll maybe have a lot of stuff going in. Like, let's say you have YouTube videos, Discord, video calls, gaming, all trying to go through your internet at once. It can't do that, and you're going to maybe lose packets, have increased ping, and not just have a good internet experience. So, companies like Netgear, Duma OS, uh, custom firmwares like OpenWRT, and then stuff like PFSense, all that stuff, all have these things called QoS or SQM, quality of service or smart queue management. Basically, what they do is they prioritize certain packets. So, for example, maybe gaming. That's, for example, what Netgear does or Duma OS. And what they do is they make it so that high priority packets easily go in first. And so you actually have a better gaming experience. So a big deal, especially for if you are a competitive player, you want to actually reduce that buffer bloat and your ping as much as possible. This is going to allow you to have better hit reg. For example, if you ever had been playing like COD, especially and you, let's say you hit a shot and you're like, this definitely hit, but it didn't register. That could be because of bad ping and buffer bloat so we're gonna be going over a couple of different ways to improve it um the best way to actually do this is to not use your motherboard's onboard lan controller you want to get a custom card now i have two um pcie cards i have this one that says intel gigabit ct desktop adapter right here this is actually a fake network card this is a fake intel one people are like faking these um, so I have results from it as well. Actually, I'm not going to link it down just because it is a fake product. I bought it on Amazon too, but the i210 T1 does perform the best. So let's get right now into results. I actually tested FPS. That is a really interesting way to test. So I tested Fortnite, Warzone, and Valorant. Just three games that I thought were very important. By the way, Valorant FPS guide coming soon. And it was really interesting seeing these results. So Let's just get right into the FPS results and then show the rest of it. Okay, so we're going to start with Warzone first. So Warzone is very interesting. So i210, that is the i210 T1 network adapter. The 2.5 is the onboard LAN adapter. And CT is this fake Intel adapter card. So first of all, as you can see, we're not going to actually want to look at the average FPS. We're going to look at the 1% and 0.1% integral. So as you can see, the 1% lows are significantly better on the i210. This is consistent across multiple games, multiple restart, multiple tests. Each game is three tested with averages out. So literally this was insane. I have no idea why I got a 31% boost in lows, but I did. You know, 0.1% are about the same. That's fine. That increase though in lows is insane. So we're now going to check over Fortnite. Literally, Fortnite continues this trend, I believe. Let's check just to make sure. Yep. So as you can see, 0.1% about the same. You're getting 2% in this with the CT, but you're getting 2% as well. So you're getting a slight increase in FPS and I guess, you know, 1.5% in the averages. But when you're getting 600 FPS, average, a 1% increase isn't that big of a deal, especially since there are no monitors with this test. This is at 1080p, by the way, just in case you guys are interested. So, and as you can see, once again in Valorant, so... I forgot what it was. Oh, yeah. 54% increase in 0.1%. 85 against the onboard. And then, you know, three, 1% to 3% in the lows. So, this is still a good increase, actually. And then 3% in the minimums. But, like, I mean, the averages. But, once again, 900 FPS. Who cares? So, now we're actually going to talk about um, some ways to test buffer bloat so first of all if you want to actually test your buffer bloat yourself so that what i would do i'll link this down below as well just go to wave just go on google and search up wave form buffer 
bloat test. I'd recommend running this like three times just to make sure and save that third one. So right here and just run this test. So for example, I actually have full, I have full three runs of everything. Oh, we also tested rainbow six. Doesn't matter. Literally same results with every way. Maybe I got like four FPS with a nine two ten, but it was 600 FPS. So it doesn't matter. Just run this and this will tell you if you are good. So for example, let's say that your that your buffer bloat is really bad. What are some ways you can do this? So we're going to start off with what's going to just, first of all, some simple things you can do. So I want you to hit Windows key and X, and I want you to open Device Manager. So once you go to Device Manager, you want to find Network Adapters, and you want to find your Network Adapter. So it'll be either Intel, Realtek, or I believe the other one is Killer, but that's not very common. So you're going to want to find the adapter, click on it. First of all, go to Power Management and uncheck allow the computer to turn this off this will stop it from turning off at times and then we're just going to want to go to advanced so these settings will be very similar these are settings for intel so they're very similar on other ones but basically what you want to do is just disable the power saving features so on Realtek, they have stuff called gigabit light and green ethernet you want to disable those but on intel we're going to disable energy efficient internet turn that off Flow control, you want to disable this. Interrupt moderation rate, you want to set this to low. You can also try adaptive, but from my results, at least for me, I get better results with low. And then you're going to want to do, um, that's actually it. You can do these like wait for link and wake on, but I don't really do those. They don't matter. Don't touch anything else though. Trust me, that's not going to work. Next thing you want to do, you want to click on where your internet is on your uh, system tray down below in the bottom right. Click network and internet settings. Scroll down to change adapter options. Find the internet you are connected to. So this is it. You're going to want to click it, double click it, properties. Now this is all you want to check is, so first of all, I'm just going to check this one. Check TCP slash IPv, IPv6. Um, many people are not on IPv6, but if you are, just check both of these just to make sure if you do not know. QS packet schedule, this does nothing. I've tested. One thing you can also do actually, if you want to, so I do this through my router, so I'm not going to, but you can do use the following DNS servers and do 1.1.1.1 and then 1.0.0.1. This is a, this is Cloudflare's DNS system. It keeps information, it keeps stuff on their service for 24 hours and it wipes it so it's a little more secure. They're not tracking you. It's also very fast DNS. Um, you could also do 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. That is Google's DNS. If you're interested, you can just Google that. Google it. Um, if you could, I would recommend setting that through Windows, though. Now we're going to go over some ways that you things you can purchase to actually increase your FPS. So first of all, the i210T1. This is the one to buy. This is the one I have. It's actually a very small PCIe card. It fits into a 1X slot. Highly would recommend actually getting this. Um, the increase you get in buffer bloat is very significant. Or the decrease in buffer bloat, sorry, in the better connection... I notice actually better hit reg with this. Next thing, if you already have this, I would highly recommend a gaming router. Now you might think, oh, gaming, like that's most things with gaming are kind of useless, but getting a gaming router is actually a big deal. So these things have quality of service. You know, we've talked about this earlier. It just easily does this. So NetDuma are 270 bucks. This one's actually very good. You can also set region locks and lock your servers. If you are interested in doing that, you can set different devices to have different amounts of internet now the xr500 this is actually what i use um this has better wi-fi than the r2 so if you still care about wi-fi definitely do this this also has duma os netgear stuff do does have it the pro gaming line i believe the xr1000 there is the xr1000 has some issues so that is one thing you'd want to look at um just remember do some of your own research you can try the xr1000 if you have gigabit internet, I believe, if you have faster than how fast can you go, you, you don't need it because you can go up to 2.6 gigabit per second. You're fine. Trust me. This is all you need. Just get this. Literally, this will be a perfect router. Um, just sign into the NetDoom OS, set up QoS. You will have an amazing gaming experience. Still, if you're having issues, make sure that you ha like have fast enough internet and stuff that you're not bottlenecked by that. Because 
if you're bottlenecked by the amount of internet you have, that's going to be your biggest issue. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. One thing that I actually did notice that I actually have trouble with with the i210 T1 is that it's so it's I've tried multiple PCI Express slots, but if I turn my PC off for a while and then I turn it back on, the i210 does not show up and then I actually causes it to not show up. So that's something I've noticed. Um, I've tried multiple driver versions. It just doesn't show up in my BIOS either. So it, I, it's, I think it's something to do with like a BIOS setting. Maybe if you guys have any ideas, let me, let me know down below in the comments. Is that something I want to know? I asked MSI, they don't know. So I guess anyways, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button down below, subscribe. Um, if you want to check out any of the stuff I talked about down below, use those links. They support me. So that's really helpful. I will see you guys later. Peace.